It is a simple question with profound implications. Is your drinking water safe? That is a key question health officials are trying to determine through a massive statewide effort to test Minnesota's drinking water. They're looking for harmful forever chemicals known as PFAS, which have been linked to serious health problems. But is the state chasing a moving target here? Fox 9 investigator Nathan O'Neill joins us after digging into answering that question. Nathan? Yeah, well, our drinking water is highly regulated and tested. But when it comes to these forever chemicals, the landscape is relatively new and it's changing fast. But what the federal government does next could have a direct impact on whether your drinking water is deemed safe or not. In the land of 10,000 lakes, water is the key to life. From Minnesota's rolling prairies and farm fields to the bustling metropolis of the Twin Cities. But beneath the surface rests a baffling irony. While many of these lakeside communities may be surrounded by water, some of it may be simply unsafe to drink. For Steve Johnson in East Metro, a sip of water from the tap seems a luxury. It's only possible after recently getting this specialized filtration system. In my house, these were installed in February, so... For months, Johnson relied on cases of bottled water after the well on his West Lakeland Township property was found to have elevated levels of PFAS, or forever chemicals. Since the 1940s, PFAS, also known as per- and polyfluorical substances, have been used to manufacture household items, from nonstick cookware to carpeting to waterproof clothing and more. The man-made chemicals do not break down over time, which is why they're often called forever chemicals and have been linked to serious health problems, including increased risk of cancer. There is no known way in the environment for it to break down, so it's termed forever chemicals. So when it's there, it's a long-term forever problem, and that's why we have concerns. The forever chemicals seeping into Johnson's property likely comes from the state's largest known PFAS contamination, after manufacturer 3M illegally dumped PFAS waste in the East Metro. It contaminated the drinking water of more than 170,000 people, leading to Minnesota's largest ever environmental lawsuit and an $850 million settlement. Clean water should be a right uh, that everyone has access to. And, uh, and um, here in the East Metro, we have a lot of contaminated groundwater. We're not the only people in Minnesota that are dealing with water problems. To find out, state health officials are now embarking on a massive statewide initiative to collect, test, and monitor water from every single community water system in the state of Minnesota. Our goal is to sample all public all community public water systems in the state of Minnesota. So that's you know, community public water systems are those towns, cities that distribute water to their customers. Steve Robertson is leading the project. The purpose of that is to try to is with that information to be able to protect human health exposure that might take place through, through drinking water. So far, almost two-thirds of the state's 960 community water systems have been sampled. About 1% of those have exceeded health-based standards. As a whole, is the water in Minnesota safe for drinking water when it comes to PFAS? Yes, our results are indicating that while we are seeing PFAS compounds, by and large, they're at very low levels. Uh, and as I indicated earlier, there's just a small percentage of systems that have had results that indicate there's any, any kind of health-based concern. Wheat Park is one such concern that's been flagged by the health department. All three of the groundwater wells that provide water to the city's 8,000 residents have been found to have elevated levels of PFAS. Should residents be worried about their drinking water? They should be knowledgeable about it. While those chemicals have been found in the groundwater here in Wade Park, there are still some pretty big questions. Like, where in this community is this contamination coming from? And is there anyone to blame? An investigation is now underway and a cleanup plan is in the works. As water professionals, we want to make sure that we give us citizens, residents, visitors the safest drinking water we can have. But the definition of what you're told is safe could soon be changing after the Environmental Protection Agency signaled it could lower the threshold for PFAS, meaning even smaller traces of the chemicals could deem a water source unsafe. Practically, that could mean even more wells in the footprint of the East Metro could qualify for 3M settlement money, 
stretching those dollars even thinner. That is the type of data that's going to impact how the future usages of the settlement are going to play out. Jeff Holtz lives in Lake Elmo. He's also on the work group advising on how that multi-million dollar settlement should be spent. As we continue to improve our ability to detect, as more data comes out, that it likely is going to impact the health index formula, and it means the dollars will be used in a quicker manner. We took those concerns to the state's Pollution Control Agency, which has authority over the 3M settlement money. There are some folks who are in the community who worry that if the EPA lowers its standard and the state follows suit, that means the money will be spread thinner. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? It's very important. When the state settled with 3M, we had the settlement there, and it says in there that also it's called a cons uh, consent order behind it that says if the money were for some reason to run out of the settlement, 3M is still responsible to take care of the drinking water needs for the communities under the consent order. In the meantime, the state plans to continue its PFAS testing across Minnesota to locate and identify any contaminated drinking water. We'll continue to work looking for the source to have those that are responsible, which we call responsible parties, to cover the cost of the cleanup and providing safe and sustainable drinking water to those that need it. Does that mean more lawsuits? It could. Sometimes we're able to work with parties to arrive at a way to make sure communities are addressed without having to go to a lawsuit. But if we need to go to the courts to do that, to hold those companies responsible, we will do that. Well, we know that the East Metro has its problems, but what about the rest of the Metro or the rest of the state? Well, we have an interactive map for you to explore. You can just see all of these testing sites here across the state, and you can it's pretty easy to navigate, actually. If you just kind of zoom into the area you're interested in, you can see this one right here, marked purple. This one is St. Paul Park, and it's actually one of those community water systems that was flagged by the health department. It'll have results of most recent tests, as well as some information about what's actively being done to address that problem head on. Again, this is just one of hundreds of examples that you can explore. We're going to put this map on our website, fox9.com. Nathan, obviously, as, as we look at your piece and, and even the map there, it seems like there's a lot of effort going into detecting the contamination and where it is, where it's coming from, possibly. But what about the cleanup efforts? Yeah, well, just a few days ago, in fact, the state announced it has purchased state-of-the-art technology to the tune of a, about $700,000 that aims to remove and destroy PFAS in both ground and surface water in the East Metro. Now, they're going to start in Lake Elmo likely next month, and we're going to be tracking the progress of all of those treatments.